In the last episode... I wrote to you, Monsieur Mamet. At least you got my name right. I prefer to work from nature. Well, I was impatient to be out there, in the light. I think we've really done something. You know, we can never go back from this moment. So you're not a very successful artist, then? Not yet. I stood there in that green dress for four days and needed a painting for the salon. Are you going to recognize this child? Suzanne, where did you spring from? Unfortunately, the man is as incomprehensible to me as his work. <laughs> They're not ready for you, Manny. When will they be ready? I'd say not for a while. He's trying to do something else. Something else that isn't art. Refused. If the salon self reject me, I would take the matter into my own hands. We should have our own exhibition like Manny. It all happened so suddenly. All my friends, everyone, dashing off in different directions. Have you even thought about this at all? I have. What if you get killed? Most likely the war will be over in a couple of weeks. <laughs> After the war, Camille and I were afraid of what we might find when we returned from London. Burnt out homes, shattered churches. As the train touched the outskirts of Paris, we were greeted by buildings we once knew. Now crumbling to rubble. Wall after wall. Pockmarked by rifle shots, blasted by cannon. If he is on, Monsieur Monet, I fear the world has not changed. A city ravaged by war has a sad, stark beauty and a scent. I couldn't place it at first. Shall we pass the cemetery? Let me get this right. The entire war, 1870, 71, you were in London. With my wife and little boy. I'd done my military service ten years before. Besides, an artist has greater battles to fight. The Salon, the most important showcase for art in France. That was our battleground. But the Marquis de Chenevier, the new Minister for Art, was a fierce enemy. His job was to strangle art. For any great nation to recover from war, it must be strong, resolute, united. It is the patriotic duty of every artist to serve France through art. We have witnessed in the streets of Paris how delusions of freedom and revolution lead to violence and terror. Liberty. Equality. <laughs> Fraternity. Work. Justice, public order, that is what this nation needs. Artists of France know this. Reject tradition. And so long as I draw breath, you have no future. In 
In Paris, the government was suspicious of the smallest gathering. You could feel it on the streets. Good to be back. Have you ever tasted English cooking? <laughs> <laughs> I must apologize for the changes. There used to be a woman on every street corner. Now a soldier is still looking to pick you up, Mike. Not me, Manet. You, perhaps? No, I'm a Manet, Money. With any luck, they'll shoot you by mistake. <laughs> Places government? I'll tell you. Government. <coughs> in ink. It's exactly the same in London. Disraeli, Gladstone. Different men, still politicians. The battle will never be over. We've seen enough bloodshed. But you saw action. More than you. And why your only enemy was dysentery. <laughs> dysentery and poverty. Renoir needed to get his work shown. But after the war, the Salon jury was in no mood for Renoir. Well, well, well. How delightfully modern. Such a bold approach to an indelicate theme. And this will look absolutely magnificent on the walls of a public latrine. <laughs> <laughs> Edgar Degas. Rich, charming, witty. The ballet was his muse. To the audience at the Opera House, it had such an air of refinement. Bravo. Bravo. But backstage, one or two patrons of the arts, maybe, but the rest, a dirty business. <laughs> to pluck a young girl out of poverty and into their fatherly care. An allowance given. Liberties taken. Yes, a dirty business. In those days, Degas was a great friend to us all. That was before the rot set in. Good afternoon. He was such a strange fish. That's enough for now. What is it with you and dancers? Not you, too. Does it occur to nobody that what I love is the sweep of the fabric, the shapes the dancers' bodies make? I don't depict dancers, I depict movement. I know, I know. Well, then don't tease me. Oh, yes. What do you think? Be honest. Hmm. You get backstage a lot, rehearsals. Well, the performance is their art, their illusion, but backstage, the rehearsals, the reality, yawning, a tired ache in a dancer's body. Hmm. <laughs> is that what I think it is? A patron of the arts. Selecting his little girl. There's always something in the shadows. It's what I do. It's what we do. We paint the reality. Imagine that. A salon of realists. <laughs> A salon of realists. <laughs> 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 the painter of women, they called Renoir. Morning. Without the female breast, he once said, I would never have become a painter. Glass of wine? <laughs> the women in his paintings were always beautiful. Sorry, I wonder if you could help me. He's pulled too by mistake. Go on. Help me celebrate. 
to a fine day's business. Money! Money! We're having lunch in the park. Why don't you join us? That's a spectacular cheese. <laughs> I just sold three paintings. You're a new dealer. Oh, always a stern tone. No, it's not a new dealer, but... He buys my paintings, too. You can't celebrate every time. <laughs> well, why ever not? What is life for? Hurry up, Benoit! We bought a bottle of vintage cognac as well. Never mind, we'll get another one. <laughs> of course, you should never rely on a single source of income, but if a wealthy man is investing in your talent, who would But nothing was ever certain. Manet and Degas had their family money, of course. It was different for them. Portraits. That's what people want. And I am going to paint yours, Papa. What's the point? A sick old man. Why? A bit small. Small? Small and gloomy. You don't want to please the salon? Fine. But you must at least please your buyers. I don't have to please anyone. I'm an artist. I paint what I see. I paint the truth. Till the money runs out. All is well. Oh, yes. Yes. With the business? It's fine. Carry on. Paint the truth. for the salon. But you detest the salon. Oh, this is going to be a masterpiece. Of me? Nope. I'm going to give those stuck-up swine exactly what they want. Now, this I would without hesitation call a masterpiece. If I was stuck raving mad. <laughs> Ah, if I were mad, I would agree with you. Oh, that is, uh, if you were mad too, which obviously you're not. Well, the scale is epic. Subject matter almost acceptable. The, the, the mess he's made with his brushes. And whose skin is that color? <laughs> not mine. Thank God. Um... No. Next. Oh, come on. I went to the salon. Not a single Degas on display. Not one. I know, Papa. What did they refuse? Show me. Papa, I didn't submit. The ankle! Keep still! You've worked that ankle enough. Leave that ankle alone. Always too much. Papa, you never know when to stop. Your talent, your gift, you must do it justice. It's just there. Where? Eyes that way. Where? Where? His eyesight wasn't good before the war. After, it got much worse. He couldn't bear the sunlight. But the sun was my muse. Every morning it rises and every sunrise, every second is unique. That morning I leapt out of bed to capture that moment. The light changes constantly. 
a sunrise must be painted as it happens. It is a race against time. Each tiny gradation of light, all the shifting tones of color. Don't tell me you can just saunter off to a studio and recreate those from memory. To capture the moment in the moment, that's the challenge. How long did I have? 30 minutes at most, maybe only 10. Sweeping washes of paint. Thin, fluid bands, a swift foundation. The sky, the docks, the water. Ah, oh, so many shades of grey. Quicker, shorter brush strokes. Boat masts and the ghost of a harbour infused with the rising light. And there, in fierce burning reds, the heart of the sun. idea how important this painting was to become. Uh, I was painting, chasing that fleeting light. It was a new way of working, but no. Simply one painting among many that I couldn't sell. Do not get too set in your ways. I do think about it, Papa. A good family, a loving wife. To be free of the need to be artificial. It just hasn't happened. I meant in your painting. You work hard. Of course you do. But do you think I should paint like Monet? Dash them off in a blink of an eye. <laughs> oh, the fleeting light. As if light cannot be recreated in a studio. Quick, quick, the sun is shining. Where's my paintbrush? <laughs> How are your eyes? That's the fashion nowadays, to, to tell the time by the painting as if it were a clock. <laughs> Don't talk to me about these half-wits who clutter up the countryside with their easels. <sighs> if I had my way, I would arm a special police force to, to shoot them on sight like vermin. Lurking in the bushes with a stupid white canvas shield. <laughs> and you wonder why you have no wife. Sorry, Papa. Degas. Degas was always different from us. Part of our movement, but outside of it. You never quite knew where you were with him. <laughs> Have you heard the news? Mark, he's been replaced by a monkey. <laughs> no, this is bad news, I'm afraid. Your favourite dealer has overreached himself. Too many paintings, not enough buyers. But he just needs to be patient, things will pick up. The market's dead. He stopped buying. Completely. One dealer, how much difference can it make? It's not too late to submit. No. Never. As long as we let the salon make the rules, our work will just be the smallest flame in constant danger of... I say we start a fire. Come on, remember Basil's dream? An exhibition of our own. With no jury, no marquee. We paint what we want, we sell what we can. A salon of realists. Manet? I wish you luck, sincerely, but to attack from within, that's the challenge. Why? Why live by their rules? What do you want next, the Légion d'Honneur? <laughs> if such honours did not exist, I would not invent them, but they do. The Légion d'Honneur, since you ask yes, I would accept it. Good night. Okay. 
A bottle of champagne, I think, gentlemen. <laughs> An exhibition of our own. There was no going back. But for Degas, the struggle was about to become much harder. John, please! He's having fun! And I'm working! Well, stop a while! I can't stop, the light will change! So? The veal's not going anywhere! That's not the point! Never mind. Stay there. Stay there. is hard enough. And there are the creditors. Dear Papa, he's left me rather a lot to tie up. But he was a wealthy man. <sighs> so did I. So, you're keeping busy. The exhibition. We found a studio. Nadar, the photographer, he's lending it to us. And we have more artists lined up. Please, reconsider. How many people are going to come to this? Tori. To me, this just seems... Utterly mad! And most of them have nothing to lose. No talent, no reputation. But Degas! You'll never sell another painting. Go. In a photographer's studio, how apt. <laughs> One passing fad pays host to another. In the weeks before the exhibition, we drove ourselves harder than ever. We painted from our hearts, not our heads. It meant everything to us to find new ways to capture our world. I'm taking a break. I wish I wasn't painting you seated. Why? I prefer paintings that make me want to stroke them. When I finish a buttock, I like to give it a little pat. Now, come on. I've got to get this done. Nini, this is serious. Stupid exhibition. Whose idea was it? Exhibition. It was uh, Basile's idea. 
Who? Frederick Basil, he died in the war. <laughs> Idiot! Stupid! He enlisted! Come on. Did you find yourself painting with more freedom than before? Painting? Painting? <laughs> what about the finances, the letter writing, the publicity, the printing of the brochures, the content of the brochures, the setting up of a company, collective membership agreement rule 17, paragraph 10A. Is that what drives an artist to be an investor in a joint stock company? <laughs> what a business. Painting? Well, we did a bit. <laughs> Within that small photographer's studio on the Boulevard of Capucine was the most vibrant, most modern exhibition Paris had ever seen. Maybe they'll all come in the evening. It's only the first day. It's the opening. There should be a crowd, a queue around the corner. This is no ordinary exhibition. You're right. It's a disaster. You must be patient. Word will spread. We need reviews. I wrote to everyone. <clears throat> All the papers. I wrote to every newspaper, every journal, every single one. On looking at the first rough works, and rough is the right word, I know, <laughs> yet one simply shrugs one's shoulders. On seeing the next lot, you burst out laughing. <laughs> oh, but at the last one, no, then you finally get angry. And you are sorry that you did not give the franc you paid to get in to some poor beggar. <laughs> oh, dear. No, that's it. No, give your franc to a beggar. Then he can go and buy two of their paintings with it. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Every day worse than the last. Opening day, 175 visitors. Month later, final day, 54. Art critic. Is that a profession? <laughs> <laughs> it's not even finished. It's all blood out. He must have been drunk. Claude. There's something about the work that you don't understand. Oh. The artist himself. Actually, I, I do have a question, yes. How's your eyesight? <laughs> I think you should leave now. Uh, no. We've paid our money. We're having our entertainment. This is an art exhibition, not a circus. Oh. Oh, so... So this wasn't painted by a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should make myself clearer. Well, I'd agree with that. You're upsetting my wife. said we were declaring war on beauty. And the wallpaper in its embryonic state was more finished. And our young heads were filled with beauty. And my impression sunrise? What was it? 
My impression, somebody wrote, unimpressed. From an insult came a name. Impressionism. A name. The only return on all that work. What are you doing here? Congratulations. What an exhibition. What? What, you would rather have been exhibiting with us than at the Salon? You're joking. Half a million people saw my work. But what you're doing, it's glorious. Well, the public, it seems, would disagree. They don't understand it now. Of course they don't. It's the future. Your husband is the Raphael of water. The what? Raphael. He's a dead painter. What was it Corbet said when he was complimented on that seascape? It's not a seascape, it's a it's time, time of, of day. day. That's what they don't understand. You don't paint a subject, you paint the effect on that subject of a time of day. Yes, that's all very well, but have you got that 20 francs you said you'd lend me? You've heard about the guy. His father's business. He owes a fortune. Poor de Gaulle. Uh, poor de Gaulle. So now he has to live like the rest of us. Don't give me poor de Gaulle. We all need money. Alice Day. How do you do? Claude Monet. Claude Monet, the great artist. Yes, I know. Hardly great. No, oh, you're great. People just haven't seen it yet. Madame, you're very kind. Oh, so my husband tells me. I prefer more refined work myself, but each to his own. Now, you'll be painting for us out in the garden. Madame, while I was waiting, was that you playing the piano? It's just a little serenade, yes. Ah. Well, I prefer more refined work myself, but each to their own. Good day. Oh, Monsieur Monet, come back. If I was too direct, forgive me. Madame, if my work is beyond your comprehension, what good would it do me to paint here? I would curse you and you would curse me. I would not curse you. Well, then I would curse enough for the both of us. Please give my regards to Monsieur Oshede. Monsieur Monet, may I be honest? Have you not been so already? If I had a choice between a Monet and a Raphael, I would choose a Raphael. So would the Marquis. But, when I was a child, did I appreciate Raphael? His mastery of composition, his chiaroscuro? Please give me time. Whatever you paint here, I shall learn to cherish. from the train. It stains the air. And then the sunlight illuminates the smoke. The colour that I saw in those white clouds. I have to capture George, it. George, the butcher won't give us any more credit. After that last exhibition, I didn't think that I could go We've on. We've run out of bread. Oh, butchers, bakers, what do they matter? Oh, we need to eat. 
survive, don't we? You said no to Mr. Oshite. No. No, I'll do that work. Thank you. What's the matter? What is it? Sit down. Sit down. light on my face. Why do you like painting in the dark? Remove your clothes, please. Remove your corset, please. Models weren't people to Dugar. They were objects. Moving shapes, animals who lived in the shadows. Usually when I do that, the gentleman stares at my body. But Dugar took everything in, always writing notes to himself. I thought you were a painter, not a writer. Ideas, observations. That's why he never stopped experimenting, finding new ways of working. You don't just paint what you see. <laughs> of course not. Trickery and vice. That's painting. It's like committing a crime. Well, each of us, in his own manner, was trying to find his way back from that dreadful exhibition. Mm -hmm. You were bolder than most. The Gare Saint Lazare. Had to do it. Renoir said you were mad. To me, that was a good sign. How do you do? Monsieur, I'm the artist Claude Monet. I would like to paint your station. To paint it? Oh, I see. Well, the, uh, the front of the building is the most important. Monsieur, amazing. I would like to paint inside. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, the steam gets everywhere. You won't say a thing. I will see the steam. Yeah? I will paint the steam. Right. I would like to paint wherever I choose. Is there a problem? <laughs> Well, well, there is a bit, yes. Uh, this being a train station, we do tend to get rather a lot of uh, trains <laughs> and passengers. Monsieur, for some time now, I have been considering whether to paint the Gare Saint-Lazare or the Gare du Nord. I have to tell you, your station, from the way that it is run to the architecture, is infinitely superior. But we'll do our best. If I am to immortalize a railway station, would you rather I went to the Garden Ten minutes, I mean, ten minutes at most. The trains were halted, platforms cleared. He even ordered the engines to be crammed with coal so as to give out more steam. For several hours, I, Station Master Monet, had the freedom of the Gare Salazar.
Bend your back more, please. How much longer? Please, your back. Do you like women? What an extraordinary question. Well, you always make us look so ugly. If you want to look beautiful, go and sit for Monsieur Renoir. I show women as they really are, not as some ignorant aristocrat wants them to be. The Marquis at the Salon, you wouldn't know him. I know a lot of very respectable gentlemen. You'd be surprised. Yes, I'm sure I would. Some of them even pay to spy through the keyhole. I am an artist. <laughs> you paint nudes. I do not paint nudes. I paint women without their clothes on. Oh, they are so different. The nude is always in a pose. A woman without her clothes is a woman in an honest moment. That's why it looks as though you're peeping through a keyhole. You're back. Dugar never married, of course, and there were strange rumors. But over the years, he painted women as they'd never been seen before, real women, doing real things. The greatest artist, the English called him. <laughs> Not the greatest character, though. Money came and went, but the debt still mounted. But I desperately needed Oshide to keep buying my work. Sensational. I think it's horrid. Blanche. <laughs> <laughs> Don't the turkeys need freedom? Come on. <laughs> Off you go. All of you. <laughs> so, you're going up in the world. I last know this was a payment from your husband. Oh. But this time I regret. I need cash. Yes, of course. And how is your wife? Much the same. But we have another exhibition, and if that goes well... What is it? Don't neglect her. I'm not. I'm doing this for her. But you think that I'll take the money to the nearest bar? No. Is your husband in the house? No, um, he had to go to Paris. Paris? He was going to pay me. He can't, he can't pay you. We can't pay you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, he, he won't talk to me, but he, um, he owes a lot of money to a lot of people. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm rude all the Tell your husband not to sell my paintings. They will soon be soaring in value, believe me. Blanche was right. It's horrid. Yes, it is. It's horrid. <laughs> the critics hated the painting that I did for Oshide. But by our third Impressionist exhibition in 1877, the tide had started to turn very slowly. At least the reviews were better. Here, one cannot deny the terrifying realism of these faded creatures exuding vice. And, and here, a joyful glow touches even the shadows. The effect is like the shimmer of a rainbow. And, and this one, the bustle, the colour, the movement, the clamour, a pictorial symphony. 
Ah, the wisdom of the art critic. Well, at least some of them were starting to see. Yeah, one or two. But what did an artist remember? A hundred words that sing his praises or ten that cut him to pieces? That's a pretty one. The critics had other words for it. Well, I think it's pretty. <laughs> my friends wonder why I'm not married. I would spend my whole life in mortal dread that my wife would say, that's a pretty one, after I finished a work. <laughs> Did you have any idea what Degas was working on? At that point, the usual. I had my own work. Not the usual. I'm referring to the recent auction of the Degas estate, his private collection. Oh, those! <laughs> no one knew about those. It would have ruined him. No, don't look at those. <gasps> Go, get out! Don't be angry. That is all for today. Finished. Please, Monsieur Degas! Now! Go! No, those pictures would not have gone down well with his usual collectors. Prostitutes, madams, brothels. Oh, yes, Duga. A strange fish indeed. My patron, Ernest Oshede, was in two million francs of debt. Can you believe it? Goodness me, you're all here. Hello. Hello. I'm so sorry we're late. Alice. Come here. I'm sorry the house isn't clean. Oh, no, please, this is so kind of you. Girls, this isn't your home. They're children. And it is their home. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Oh, and um, this is Ernest, my husband. Come here. Ernest. Name. Off you go. Let me take Thank that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, thank you. It's from Monsieur Manet. Come here. From Manet. There's a man who will go to heaven. Come on, Camille, keep up. I can't. We've hardly left the house. Come on, girls, who can find the best picnic spot in the world? The days, the nights of screaming. No one should suffer like that. Camille. At first I resisted, but, but slowly the idea took form in my mind, and as it took form, 
It became an obsession. I found myself searching for the succession of colors that death was imposing on her face. The violent emotion of the colors. First and foremost, I reacted to those. And what could be more natural than to preserve the last image of a person who's about to leave you forever. <laughs> the painter first, then the husband. <laughs> A little air, I think. Oh, yes. What happened to my mirror? The removal men dropped it. So lovely to look at. Monsieur, my little boy, he may do this. Au revoir. A new minister for arts. And he's a friend of yours. You may get your Légion d'honneur after all. Thank you for suggesting I can only achieve it through corrupt means. I'm working on a new painting. I can see it now. The, the, the colours, the lights. This will be my finest painting yet. You always say that. And it's always true. <laughs> Where does the time go? When I was young, I stored up all my plans in a cupboard, locked away safely with a key. And now... You've lost the key. <laughs> Seeing you is always a tonic. Time for me to go. Light outside shouldn't be so bad now. We didn't know then what was happening to Manet. To live with so much pain. Degas was always a loyal friend to Manet, but he was a lonely and unhappy man. And that was beginning to show. By 1880, he'd started scheming to control the Impressionist exhibitions, and us. Too much bickering and unpleasantness for me. I went back to our old adversary, the Salon. My Lavacor painting was selected, but could anybody see it? What is the point of having a picture in an exhibition that no one can see? It's the Salon. My picture is almost on the ceiling. A butcher could have hung it better. Crammed them in like soldiers in a cattle truck. Well, tell our friends to bring binoculars. I'm complaining to the Minister of Finance. This is the last year that I exhibit at the Salon, and I mean it this time. Monet is dead. 
I'm on it. You think you'd be the first to know? Where is it? Uh, the Impressionist School has the honour of informing you of the grievous loss it has suffered in the person of Monsieur Claude Monet, one of its revered masters. <laughs> well, revered's good. The funeral for Monsieur Claude Monet will take place on May the 1st at 10 o'clock in the morning in Monsieur Cabanel's gallery. You're requested not to attend. On behalf of the head of the Impressionist School, Monsieur Degas. Degas? What? Degas also twisted the knife by spreading malicious gossip about myself and Alice Oshede. How dare he? Monsieur Monet, we thought you deserted our happy camp. I'm an artist, Degas. What of your prop? You will not make slanderous comments in the press about my private life. Surrendered your impressionist brush, just like Auguste Renoir. Come crawling back. What's the matter? Not as well hung as you thought. At least I got mine up. Perhaps you should go back to decorating pots. Degas. Hypocrite! You betrayed us all, running back to the cellar like a dog. Well, I must have tell my family that I'm out on the streets because I've decided to do what Dugar tells me. I've got eight children to support. Oh, do you have any idea which ones are yours? I love my family. I also love my work. There is love and there is work, and we have but one heart. Remember this, Dugar. One day your cronies will leave you, and despite your talent, you will grow old alone, and you will die alone. Duga. <laughs> Made enemies of us all. Tell me, your side. A little later. Of course. You must be tired. Life is short. I have a painting to finish. The critics call my work The Cult of Ugliness. My dear Suzanne doesn't think enough of public opinion. He despises the most elementary things, um, language, dress, hygiene. <laughs> I'm painting for myself, not to amuse other people. Perhaps you're just not good enough. Perhaps I'm too good. Perhaps I'm a genius. I would very much like to behave like a husband. But as you never cease reminding me you are married to somebody else. I think I'm coming to the end of Impressionism. Oh, I'll be the only one left. Suzanne, you have shown us the future. <laughs>